Hello, my name is Caitlin, and I am joined by Dr. Georgia Pardum today to talk about the, uh, the women's conference that's coming up here in April. So um, we've heard from a lot of speakers who are going to be there about their talks, but we haven't heard from you yet about your talk. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, so the theme of this year's conference is life, which is contending for life from beginning to end. And so I'm going to be giving a talk um, entitled The Quest for Perfection, um, Eugenics Past, Present, and Future. And eugenics is might be a term that people aren't familiar with, but essentially it means well-born or good in birth. And so um, a lot of people would be familiar with it if I said this is something the Nazis practice in mm -hmm. trying to get rid of the Jewish people because they didn't believe they were well-born, basically. Um, so, but it, it is, a, is historically, it's a major part of U.S. history, even though it doesn't appear in a lot of U.S. history books. Mm -hmm. um, it was very active in the early 1900s um, here in the United States. And basically, uh, it was a lot of what we call negative eugenics. So in the sense of um, uh, sterilizing people, involuntarily mm -hmm. sterilizing people that they didn't believe should reproduce, mm -hmm. uh, prohibiting marriage, restricting immigration, you know, a lot of different things were put into place to try to make sure that only those that they felt were fit um, would reproduce mm -hmm. and so marry and reproduce. And so one of the things that came out of that, Margaret Sanger, who is the founder of Planned Parenthood, um, that was actually, again, she was very much a eugenicist, and mm -hmm. Planned Parenthood really kind of had that beginning. Um, it was originally called the American Birth Control League, but became Planned Parenthood. And so we'll talk about the history of that and how all that came out, and really the evolutionary underpinnings of that, because it is very much an evolutionary mindset of we have to evolve into something better or higher, and we can only do that through... Um, man basically mm -hmm. uh, restricting man um, and, and doing that and so and then we're going to talk about okay well that's the past and that's what's happened but we don't do those kinds of things anymore oh yeah we do we just do it in different ways and different methods of um, doing the same sorts of things mm -hmm. and so we're going to talk about what does that look like in our current day we're going to talk about how it's become quiet and careful mm -hmm. but it's very much still alive and it is very very important to a lot of the issues that we're going to be talking about at the conference mm -hmm. because those that were not considered well born were those that were uh, people other than European whites. So it's a race issue. Mm -hmm. uh, those with disabilities, which we're going to be talking about, they were con not considered well born. So it has to do actually with a lot of the other topics that we're going to be talking about, but how this has looked historically and how it even looks today. Yeah. And I'd like to get to um, your background too, but mm -hmm. first you mentioned the, uh, some of the other topics. So what, what are some of those other topics right. at the conference? So we're going to talk about the issue of racism um, with Dr. Charles Ware, and who's just an expert in talking about this and understanding that we're all one blood, but uh, multiple people groups. And then um, disabilities and how do we speak life, basically. How do we mm -hmm. use life-affirming words and what we say? And then we're going to be talking about um, sex trafficking and trafficking of human beings, which is a major um, uh, issue when it comes to the value of life and, and the devaluing mm -hmm. of life. And then we're going to be talking about the issue of abortion, um, which obviously um, is, is very much devaluing unborn life. And then even when does life begin and when does life end? Uh, and and those, are, those aren't necessarily easy questions in some ways to right. answer. Um, and so we're going to talk about that. And then how do different religions view life and how mm -hmm. is Christianity really unique in its view of life? So I think it's going to be a lot of things that are very um, informational, but we want to make it practical too. So I know this, now what do I do about it? Right. One of the things that I've heard recently in argument for abortion is that people say that, well, you care about the unborn baby, but what about after the child is born? Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, that's, that's important to know, too. I think a lot mm -hmm. of people, when they think of contending for life, they think of abortion. Right. But there's all of these other categories and areas that we need to be aware of. It's across the spectrum. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's about the valuing of all life from beginning to end, mm -hmm. whether it's unborn or whether that life is dying. Um, it's yeah. really about the value of all of that. Yeah. Awesome. So can you tell us, just for those who may not know, a little bit about your background? Okay. So um, I have been at Answers in Genesis for almost 12 years now, and uh, before that I was a college professor for about six years at a small Christian college in Ohio, and I have a PhD um, in molecular genetics. That's my specialty. Mm -hmm. And then, um, let's see, I've been married for almost 21 years next month. And um, I have a 14-year-old daughter, and uh, we live on a small um, hobby farm in rural Indiana, so we have animals and, you know, all sorts yeah. of fun things, so <laughs> of wide and varied experiences, um, but uh, yeah. Awesome. Going off that then, what is, um, what would you say makes you passionate about this topic, the topic of life um, from beginning to end? Well, you know, 
Because I think, because a lot of the evolutionary teachings that are so prominent in our society, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, that's, and part of that is because people have gone away from the Bible. And it's not just about, you know, we think, tend to think, well, this is just about creation. That's just about Genesis. No, it's about so much more. Because if there weren't two human beings that were made in the image of God, then why is life precious and important? You know, if we're not made in the image of God, if we're just another animal, which is what evolution would say, mm -hmm. then why is it important to protect life? Why not just do away with people once they no longer contribute to the gross national product? Why, why have people with disabilities when they're just a drain on society? I mean, that, I mean, when you think about it, you know, it, it, it deals with a lot more than just, you know, um, that God created and how God created it. It's about what is the, I guess, the cultural sort of significance mm -hmm. of that, a societal significance of that, and ethical, issue, ethical significance of that. So we have to look at all of those things and how they're related to Genesis. Right. So you've already touched on some of this, but then how would you say that the topics of this conference are relevant for women today? Well, again, these are things, and I think, as, especially as Christian women, I think sometimes we tend to think, well, we're in church, and that doesn't happen in my church, that doesn't happen in my family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. You may not know about it right now to some degree, but it does. Um, especially abortion, it's prevalent. A mm -hmm. lot of women have had abortions, even women in the church. And so it's something that we need to be dealing with. A lot of us, like, if you're my age, you're dealing with, soon, you're dealing with aged parents. And mm -hmm. so... Um, these euthanasia issues are going to come up mm -hmm. and doctors pushing certain things or saying, you know, no, don't, don't do this, do this. And so these are questions that are, are very relevant that we're going to have to answer. I, I can almost guarantee, you know, as sad as it is to say, uh, we probably, when we've been out in public, may have seen someone who's being sex trafficked, not, mm -hmm. not realized it, not known it, wow. but, you know, and so what can we be looking for and how mm -hmm. can we help? So I think, you know, we need to realize we're not immune and, and we very much need to be a part of our society and, and in impacting the society right. for Christ. We almost think of these things as far away from us, like right. not touching us, not touching our families mm -hmm. or our communities, but having no idea what's really going mm -hmm. on underneath the surface. Right, exactly. So what are some things then that you would hope that conference attendees would walk away with from this mm -hmm. conference? Yeah, I hope they really um, walk away with just a good, a really good understanding and, and a passion for life. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's, you know, that we, we need to think about what we say. Um, we need to think about being very aware of those around us and offering um, help to those around mm -hmm. us. You know, this isn't condemning people. You know, I, I think a lot of times, well, because this has happened to you or because you've made this decision, you know, somehow you're not forgiven or mm -hmm. you're not, and, and we don't want to do that. You know, we want to offer love. We want to mm -hmm. offer the gospel of Christ. We have the best answer to all of this, and that's mm -hmm. the simple gospel. And so we want to be able to share that with people and share it intelligently. I think that's one of the things with an apologetics conference for women is how do we become equipped on these issues? What is the information that we need to know? And then how can we use that to share, to share God's love with yeah. other people? These are things that make this conference so unique, too, mm -hmm. among other women's conferences, that right. it goes so much deeper. Right, yeah. exactly, so, exactly. Yeah, so can you tell us a few more details, like where, when? And sure. Can so talk about the, the gift box? Yeah, so it's coming up April 6th and 7th, so mm -hmm. not a whole lot more time. I'm, I, I'm just, I kind of look at my watch, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> I, um, I can't believe February is almost is done. done. Okay, just saying, I'm ready. <laughs> Um, so uh, April 6th and 7th at Florence Baptist Church in Mount Zion. So it's about 20 minutes from the Creation Museum, 20 minutes from the Ark. It kind of, was kind of situated in between. Um, and if you register before the end of February, okay, it has to be before the end of that, you will be entered into a drawing for this beautiful fair trade um, gift box that we have here. We have this cute little stuffed elephant here. We have um, some note cards. We have some uh, jewelry items. This is like a little journal or a notebook. Um, this is actually a wallet. Um, there's a bracelet. So lots of really neat, pretty things here. And if you're familiar with fair trade, um, you know, what it basically has to do with is giving a fair and living wage to women um, and, and children in other countries who, so they don't enter the sex traffic trade or, or the human trafficking trade and um, giving them a fair wage. And so this, um, we do a lot of that here at Answers in Genesis through the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter. We support that. 
And so register at AnswersForWomen.org before the end of February, by the end of February, last day of February, and you can be entered to win this gift box. So so, so many pretty things in there. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Very, great, very nice. Great. And so we're going to have, too, um, one of the things at the conference that I always try to have is lots of exhibitors. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the speakers, but we bring in very biblically-minded, like-minded ministries. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had more this year than ever. Awesome. <laughs> People keep saying, can I come? Can I? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got the space, so it's not a problem. So um, there will be a lot of really good ministries to help equip you in multiple ways um, at this awesome. conference. That's so great. Yeah. And then um, women that, or families, or whoever wants to register, mm -hmm. women specifically. But yeah. um, they also receive admission to the museum and Ark Encounter. Right, correct? a seven-day pass um, to the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter. That is for the person who attends the conference. Mm -hmm. And then for their family, um, they can get 20% off. And so awesome. it's a really great deal. You can make it a whole sort of family affair. Enjoy the conference, but still have plenty of time to, to do the other things as well. That's awesome. Yeah. So we'll pin the link in the comments. We hope you'll check it out and hope to see you there. Yeah. Hope Thank to see you, you there. Georgia. Bye.